Howdy and welcome back. This is Ethelred, the worst Civ player in ever. So I did take one turn in between games and that was because I doubted I would remember what I needed to do. I recognized while staring at the screen that I needed to build the Oxford University which requires that I have universities everywhere which more or less that's that's coming along. All right um but to mark Tematarcha. Well, you know, it was building a granary. I realized I could dump my gold, I had enough gold, into buying a library there. And then set my next build priority as a university here. And try to give them some help with the workers. I don't know exactly what I can do in this regard. Maybe if I get a workshop someplace, I don't know. Develop some of these, yeah, maybe develop the salt. Anyway, so I thought I'll never remember. Well, I did. So, and I'm fessing up that I took a turn. And in that turn, we did this bit of a scrum here with these barbarians. Nothing really eventful happened, but we did reorganize some troops and shoot some people. And with all of that said, let's... Um, gee, golly gee willikers. I sure would like to be able to get that. I wonder how long until border growth. Um, doesn't it say how many turns into a border growth? No, I guess not. Maybe because this city is producing zero culture. So, as much as I would like to come over here and improve this salt, I think I'm going to get these horses online. Horses are critical, and this city needs production just as bad as everywhere else. So it's 715. There is actually neat history coming up. Uh, we get to 800, and things will pick up a notch. Okay. And we'll actually get into Russian history, not just... Hmm. Not just, uh, you know, uh, s small archaeological findings of cities along rivers. Actual Russian history. Come about actually 840. But things will stir up a little at 800. Okay, so we can't fire from here. I'm going to bring this guy into heal. We'll park this guy halfway. Actually, you know what? Hmm, yeah, I'll leave him here for the time being. We'll just bring these guys under city defense. And that will be as much for... As much for the workers' defense as, as it is for them to heal. Alright, so this caravan was previously going to Riga, but that was because we had a, a trade route quest for Riga. We've got one for Yerevan now. Okay, and we can reach Yerevan. Where else do we have a, a quest? I think we're going to go to Yerevan. And hope the barbs don't kill it, but really... Yeah, I think that it's relatively safe between here and there. And, of course, I think wrong, because I'm never that lucky. Oh yeah, I forgot all about this guy, checking out Africa. When he gets to the edge of Africa and finds Carthage, I'm just going to have him set sail and head over to the Americas. Kiev requests a road. Well, I've done that in the past. That's a real pain in the butt to build. I guess I eventually will, but I'm not going to hurry on it. Alright, let's shoot and scoot. Nice. And this worker, yeah, we're going to build a pasture, get some horses of our very own. We're going to upgrade these guys to knights. And as soon as we're done with some of these universities, we're going to turn out more knights. Oh, and I've also changed my target. My target is no longer the Vikings. I thought about this today, and... Well, I guess I'm not certain about this, but I would kind of like to go for, um, sorry, Korea. I'd like to go for Korea. Now, I could build a stoneworks here. It'll only be five turns. Let's build a stoneworks. That'll help with production, even if it's just one production. Man, that, that unit really books it. That's nice. That, uh, archer scout of mine. Really love that combination. So I'll be getting a 
profit here in what nine turns and I will use that profit to plant him and turn him into a holy site. That's not my worker, is it? I had three, four workers. I've got three workers now. I think I don't think that's my worker. It must be a Chinese worker. I'm gonna assume that's a Chinese worker. Okay, so we've completed hooking up the salt over here. This place could use something to help the place grow. Um, I could go build some farms here. I could... Oh, look. Oh, look at the time. We've got to get more happiness resources online. So that's going to be this copper right here. And do I have any spare luxuries? I could actually go buy... I've already got copper. Oh, I'm getting copper from... Yeah, I'm getting copper from some city-state. So let's go trading for it. Korea, are you my friend? No? Alright, so I'm going to start putting a target. Oh, but look, the Vikings are number one. Maybe I should take them out. Maybe I should just take them both out. What do we think about that? Okay, so in the meantime, let's deal with our friends if we can. Um, and there are some friends out here. Like this untrustworthy uh, China. I think actually, yeah, I'm going to continue to try to befriend China. And I would like your cotton. No? Yeah, what would make that deal? <sighs> wow. You're really... You really think well of yourself. I'm not even going to talk to you. You're crazy. Let's talk to the Arabs. How about your cotton? I offered this other chick six gold. She said she wanted five iron to do it. Gee whiz, that, uh, that diplomatic penalty I took hurt so bad. I've, it was an accident, but I've got to make sure nothing like that ever happens again. If, if this is how it's going to be, will she take nine? I would rather have a good relationship with China. No, she won't even take nine. Uh-huh. So, wow. Assalamu alaikum. Trading with him would, you know, we haven't even accepted embassies. Let me buy your embassy. And in fact, let's just go down the ranks and buy embassies with everybody. Let's hear it. Mm-hmm. We'll go ahead and do the embassy thing. Who's the yeah, Don't have any embassies to trade with you. Do what or die, hui. All right. Pitchhur. Arabia. We've done that. Korea. Bloodthirsty one. Jeez. Oh, well, I guess I have gone to war against you. Egypt. Hey, you got sugar. Do I have sugar? I think I do not have sugar. How did I miss you? How did I miss you? Where are you? And where am I? Sugar, 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 sugar. Come on. Come on, Ethelred. I don't have sugar. Let's trade. Let's talk gold. Six gold. Nine? Hmm. Oh yeah, this was the guy who offered me nine. Uh, okay. Alright, I, I do need the gold. I mean, I do need the happiness. I'm losing a lot of gold, but I am trying. Hopefully, this will improve my relationships with everybody. Dumb. And last but not least, Saludos. Isabella. Okay. So now we should have embassies with everybody, and we're back in positive happiness at the great expense of our wealth and treasure. But I would rather lose wealth than happiness. And at the cost of one gold, it's worth maybe the, the small diplomatic bonuses that I get from having embassies with everybody. Tamatar char 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 can fire on somebody. Yeah, that's, that's a dandy. Mm. So, this is dicey here, but I think that we can... I should have moved him down one. Ah, it wouldn't have mattered. I still would have been in range of the barbs. And next. 
So Yerevan's friends with me because of the trade route. I wonder what positive effect that's having for me. I should say, if I can ever get there. Yerevan, yeah. Oh, I'm receiving six culture. That's nice. Biblos, they're my allies, not allies forever that were at 67. I'm gonna have to keep in mind I need some gold in order to bribe them. Okay. And this should be the last of these roaming barbs, I do believe. We'll have to... I think actually I can just leave this archer right there. I need more units. I do not have enough units. This is... That is the issue. So, with some improvements done here, still getting 13 gold per turn. Oh, we got our university. Let's, uh, let's work some citizens here and let's take somebody off of... Yeah, let's take... Shoot. Trying to decide what to take somebody off of. Ah, right here. I'm going to take him off this uh, fertile because one food and one production is not a terrible loss. Three gold is not a terrible loss. We'll put them on university. Is there any other tile that we can easily spare? I'm feeling like not really. I'll have to sacrifice growth in order to put more people on university. That wouldn't be the case though if I had farms so we'll do farms. Yep. University's popping up everywhere soon. But still a general lack of units. I should probably get another worker out. Hmm. Yeah. We'll send this worker over here to start improving Tematarcha. Because they will need it. And we'll have units over here in a minute to help protect Tamatarcha. 805! Hey, great news! Eastern Slavic tribes all across Europe and those around the Baltic Sea, the Black Sea, the State of Kerch, the headwaters of the Vistula and the Tem Tem Teman Peninsula all coalesce into a federation of Slavic people. So you see more and more Slavic populations simply all unifying under the idea that we are we are a people set apart. We are Slavs. Alright, we got the compass. So now we got another trade route. And that's about all I care about is another trade route. But we did get an improvement, a uh, promotion on one of the units, so that's that's a dandy. Okay, can we move this guy over here and start bombarding? You know what? If we can capture that worker, there's a free worker. Duh. And we'll come get the salt and improve the wheat. And Poltavka's done with its university. So we will find some citizen to move off of what they're doing, like right there. And, oh, even better, that tile. And put them on university. That's amazing. Okay, great. So, what happened there was apparently somebody was working the market. We don't need the work market. I don't want great merchants. I don't want great merchant points. So, because I assumed control of the specialists by assigning a specialist to the university, that immediately removed all of the governor's specialist controls, which was the market dude. The market dude went to the only tile that it could fit onto was the very tile I had just removed the citizen from. I could have done the same thing without clicking this tile and just clicking this university spot. Okay, so enough analysis. Let's... Hmm... I want to build a knight, but I can't this turn. It's going to be, what, two turns? Six turns until I can build more knights. So in six turns, I'm feeling like 
Poltavka is actually one of my manufacturing centers. I should make this my specialty unit center. We're going to start out on that path by getting a workshop. That will also allow me to send production to places like Tamatarcha so I can get my university up faster there. Srubna is finished with its university. It's already a sign. I guess we had unemployed population. So they went straight on to the university. This place, again, I could, you know, build a knight. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to build that next caravan. That caravan that will slot right in to the workshop and deliver um, if you know, I wouldn't be altogether surprised if the range isn't long enough. I suddenly doubt that the range will be long enough from Poltavka in order to deliver hammers all the way to Tematarcha. So maybe in Samaria, after the university of course, I should do my workshop here. I don't think this changes the fact that I want Srubna working on. Let's look look at this here. We got Kama, Poltavka, Srubna. So Poltavka still will be my my place for developing units, which means that after how many sources of iron do I have? One. I think that I'll probably build a creep post next, and then a forge. And, yeah, we'll call it right there for Poltavka. So that will become my manufacturing center. And Srubna, I don't know. We'll just play that by, by, by ear. Oh, look. Cotton. Next. So, 820. We're getting close. Uh-oh. I never started the timer. I think we got about another 10 minutes. And aren't they busy little bees sending out barbs to fight us? They are. I'm so impressed with them. Okay. Yep. Just come on over here. We'll deal with Kamatarcha for a little while. We've got roads we need to get up. So much to do. I think that Samaria, you know what Samaria is going to do? Oh, never mind. But we'll get a worker when we when we kill that barb camp. I was going to say build a worker, but that would be silly. All right. Spy has been recruited. Hallelujah. Unmet player has entered the Renaissance. I no longer have the tech lead, do I? I do. That's great. So with my spy... I'm going to guess that whoever's right behind me probably has a tech for me to steal. And I have 28. So let's see. Portugal's got 27. Korea's got 27. Anybody else have 28? Okay, so I'm feeling like stealing from Korea. Because Korea sucks. And they're at war with China. Yay! So let's send you to some Korean city. Let's see. How about Seoul? As a spy. Now, I'll eventually bring these guys home and have them work counterintelligence or diplomacy, but I think that right at this moment, for me to try to edge another tech or two in front of everybody else, it's not a bad idea for me to try to steal. Stoneworks is done. Oh, fabulous. Joy of joys. I know I'll be building the whatever whatever here the Oxford University I think I'm gonna get the workshop here um, this will not be unit production that that will be wonder production and I need to pick a city that's going to do culture production but for the time being I don't know where that is and we're down to two happiness so it is an eternal battle for happiness and I really don't even know how I'm going to deal with happiness in the n near term because right now I'm focusing everything on getting Oxford University. I'm going to have to tra make another horrible trade deal with someplace for happiness. Unless 
unless I can befriend a mercantile city-state such as Samarkand or Antwerp or Hong Kong none of which really have quests which I can satisfy but I can bribe and I do have patronage I do so I need to be ready to support Biblos because after all they are a critical partner and 500 will give me if I just wait a little while and get 500 gold that'll give me a lot more influence but then I need to work on somebody like one of those mercantile city states by the time I get there I probably will already be in the unhappiness so that may be a step for me to do after I buy something from an AI I'm thinking that's probably what's gonna happen I'll get something from an AI and then I'll work on befriending a mercantile city-state okay 850 let me pull up my list here of things because things really start going 840 the Kievan Rus emerges from this Federation of Slavs so this is you remember I don't know if you saw the Babylon series but the Mesopotamia Mesopotamian Valley was this coalition of city-states that had sometimes this city-state was on top sometimes that city-state was on top etc the Kievan Rus was the same kind of thing it was a federation of Slavic cities and what you see here is a generally you know a, a moving towards a greater uh, organization but it begins to get a name Kievan Rus which means the land of the Rus and it's something that helped it form its initial organization here was the fact that three of the city-states were all ruled by brothers Rurik and, and two other guys I didn't get all of his names so you had these three bros managing three of the cities in this federation and that really helped bring things together alrighty I think we're gonna just but, uh, I was gonna focus on this camp but I think I'll leave it with that barbarian brute guarding it because this way next turn this guy can fire on it and this guy can scoot in next 231 by 300 I want to be conducting war and I'll probably be doing that with Cossacks so the whole Cossack thing boom they will upgrade from knights which is kind of why I'm putting a priority on knights right now definitely not going to expand my empire any further than I already have and I need to move as, as I get caravans I'm gonna move them from Kama someplace else that has a granary so I can help these smaller city-states um, build up their population because I don't need to have five well three cities with less than 10 pop that's just a drain on my happiness that's all that is if they're not gonna be good cities I shouldn't have taken them so I'm gonna invest the effort and turning them into something. Oh, I don't have astronomy yet. I'll have it in seven turns and probably I'll need to have my unit in my territory anyway. So can I just sail it up there? And through tech, yeah. So Zhang is constructing Notre Dame. That's a really nice wonder. Good for them. Good for them. nice that's a dandy that we will have two workers here helping to matarcha chisel cultured all right what else anything else no yay we've got our very own horses four horses because we're the ruskies that's fabulous all right, um, the heck? He's gonna come down here and destroy some of my salt, isn't he? Yeah, 
He is, and I'm sure that's going to put me into unhappiness. So, hmm. How many turns would it take to get you over here? Uh, it would not be. You would not arrive in time. What else can we do? There's this guy. He would probably take more turns. He would take three turns. Oh, because he's a scout. That's right. That's right. Alright, so having finished that, I think that we're going to go straight away into building farms around Andro Novo. 860 with the small kingdom Rurik and the Rus do the logical thing and they attack Constantinople. So yeah, we got a little empire, we got a little kingdom here. It's not an empire, we got a little kingdom, we got some city states. Let's go try to pick off the Roman Empire, or at least what's left of it here, because you know it's Byzantine and all that. So yeah, that's a that's genius, and that's exactly what they do, and they lose. They they don't even make it to Constantinople. They just give up and go home. But they tried. So let's see. We'll heal up this chariot archer and. Work this wheat tile. I tell you, man, there's no shortage of wheat around here. So, next turn, I can almost guarantee you we're going to go into negative happiness. Because they're going to kill the salt. And that's what, that's what it's going to be. Jeez. It may take just as long as anything for me to get that scout home by way of the coast. Here it comes. Here comes the negative happiness. Japan. I love Japan. Where did I meet you? I am thrilled. There's the negative happiness. Where did I meet Japan? That is so cool. I love having Japan in this game. Was it over here? Was it some kind of boat? How did you find me, Japan? Where are you? That's so cool. I'm thrilled. Well, gonna have to put off that farm while we go repair. Jeez, that's aggravating. That's barbs for you. And I guess my embark movement is only one. Don't know how the Japanese found me, but I'm thrilled. And dude, I'll totally accept your embassy. And you probably don't have all the hate for me. Do ya? You don't know about what I did. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Oh. Yeah, I do not have any problem with them. I love you. Will you trade something with me? No, you can't. That's too bad. I love you, Japan. I'm so glad you're in this game. So, ah, you started out with this, so when I got your embassy, got it. And we've got a holy site. Boom. Alright, and let's be sure to work that holy site. Let's lock somebody onto it. Right there. Okay. That will produce happiness for us. Loving it. Any place else that has a university that's not getting worked, like maybe Srubna? Oh no, Srubna's working its university. Fab fab. Um, let me just get you back up here patrolling. I'm pretty sure the reason why I've got him going back and forth is because I'm pretty sure barbs only spawn in shadowed areas that you haven't visited in like five turns or something like that, five, seven turns. So if I just keep him running back and forth, there should never be a barb that spawns here. Okay, so, right, we were trying to get the ability to take somebody off of one of these eh tiles and move it to a better, move it to the university. And that's why I built this farm here. 
And I think that now we probably can move somebody off this tile right here. Oh, actually, yep, yep, yep. That's just, that's sensible. So onto the university. So we got two people working the university now. And with that said, shoot, what to do with comma? What to do with it? I got this worker. I kind of want to bring this worker down here and visit some love onto the rest of my cities. I mean, it's been a while since some of these cities have seen anything. Let's do that. So the Vikings are thrilled with me. That's just a dandy. Uh, no. Not going to do open borders. I fail to see... If I'm not doing a cultural win, I fail to see the reason for open borders. Oh, jeez. Time's passing. So... The Byzantine Empire, knowing about the Rus, sent a delegation of Slavic-speaking Byzantines there to establish good relations, you know, like accept embassy kind of thing. And these Byzantines got down here, found that the Slavs had no written language, and they wanted to do the Byzantine thing, which is to proselytize Christianity. And they can't very well proselytize Christianity by handing out Bibles if the Slavs have no written language. So the church does one of those things the church does best, which is to translate the Bible into the native language. No native language? No problem. We'll make a language. So the church invented a language, a written language called Cyrillic. And that's where Cyrillic came from. And then with their new language, they translated the Latin uh, Bible into Cyrillic and boom the Slavs now have a written language and they've got the Bible so Srubna my friend I'm feeling low on I'm feeling low on workmen even though we just got a workman let's get another one now this worker you or this caravan you probably can't go as far as Tematarcha so Samaria has a granary. What about Andronovo? Andronovo has. So let's go to Andronovo. What the heck is this? Are you crazy? Dude. Seriously? Look at these spots. Go settle down there and get away from my cities. And settle there and I will go to war with you. Just because you're doing such a troll thing to do. Alright. Kama. Kama can build knights. Actually, it would be dandy if Poltavka could build knights. But that's not going to be Poltavka's role right now. Poltavka is working on assuming that role. In the meantime, Kama's going to fill in. Alright. Um, I want to explore down here a little bit. So we will. And I really should end this episode actually because I'm sure at this point that I've gone over long. We'll go to Samaria. Ooh, yeah. That's why I'm exploring. So there's just a few more things for me to mention and then we'll go. It's so cool to have a Cuban rest now. Um, what, what year is it? 930? Okay, so in 880, Rurik died, bequeathing the kingdom to his son, Igor, who was at that time a baby. So his wife, Olag, took over as regent. And, oh, it's Oleg. Maybe it's his brother, Oleg, actually, now that I think about it. Because Oleg immediately goes and puts all of the cities nearby to the torch. And that's not really the type of thing uh, that a wife does. I mean, color me, I guess, old school or something. I just don't see that happening. Um, you've several times wanted open borders. You want to do it now? Thanks. Appreciate that. I'll travel through your territory. Improve that wonder. Get me back into positive happiness. Anyway, yeah, so Oleg 
He, uh, he conquers about half a dozen or so towns, including two towns that are notable, Kiev and um, Novograd. Let's go to Tamatarcha. What am I doing? I'm sending apples to Tamatarcha. That's what I'm doing. Come on down here. Okay, so golly, have we got trade routes now. Yes, we do. And this one is going to trade apples with Samaria, who's still on the low side. So now I think we've actually got apple routes going to all the cities that are low. It's like a chain of apples. Right, 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 right. So Kiev, um, who's right over here, gets conquered into Kiev and Rus. And it becomes kind of the first Joyfully among equals. Nice astronomy. So happy sand. about astronomy. And Wish I'd had that a turn ago. And we are so renaissance up in this place. I wonder if that means I can just leave now. Yep, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to send that unit to the Americas. And... We are going to, uh, I think we're going to go get physics for the trebuchet. Salt. So we're back in happiness even before I planned on being able to get back in happiness. This guy, we need to give a gift to him. That's just the cost of doing business. And that means that I can't buy another salt tile. But we can build a farm here. We will have farms. Oh, jeez. It's a freaking barb. Hate you barbs so much. Maybe this barb will do me a favor and kill this Arabian settler. That would be a dandy. No kidding. A knight for free? That's nice. That saved me several hundred. Alright, I'm getting away with myself here. So, let's see, do do do, 890, Kiev and Rus, now with Kiev under its belt, became, so Kiev was like the mercantile trade center for everything. They controlled as Kiev, look at, look at where Kiev is on the map, right? So that's like trade going into and out of Western Europe, it was also controlling this north-south trade route, and also this north route up into uh, the uh, Vikings. So Kiev was, it had, it had nailed the mercantile city-state business right. And with that now part of Kiev and Rus, Kiev and Rus had an economic center and the entire kingdom started to flourish. 910, there were some treaties which we've discovered which seem to indicate that although we don't have any other evidence that there had been some battles or skirmishes between Kiev and Rus and the Byzantines probably over uh, trade routes, but there's nothing really concrete about that. So, Oleg died in 915. He was prophesied by a sorcerer that he would die, that his life was attached to a horse. And this, so he knew the horse, like the sorcerer said, that horse. When that horse dies, you're over. So, uh, we absolutely need some monuments up in this place because these places are getting no border growth. Yeah, and we're going to do the same thing right here. Even before granary? Yeah, yeah even before granary. Anyway, so a sorcerer said, that horse over there, when that horse dies, you're going to die, Oleg. So Oleg, doing the reasonable thing, rounded up this horse, put it in a stable, and said, never let this horse out of the stable. This horse is going to be in the stable forever. Well, when the horse died, finally of old horse age, Oleg goes to the stable and gloats over the body of the dead horse, like, he he, I lived, you did, and I'm still alive. And a snake bites him and he dies. True myth. That is a true myth. All right. What else? Following... Igor's death. No, that was Oleg. Following Oleg's death, Igor 
The Sun. Remember that babe Oleg was the, uh, the regent? Igor finally got to be in charge after 35 years of waiting. And he was apparently totally peaceful because nothing happened for the next 25 years that I could find. Um, the, except for, again, some circumstantial evidence that there may have been some, uh, some squabbling over trade routes with the Byzantines. Anyway, Igor died in 960, which is right where we are. His wife ruled a bit for a bit, and then it was followed by his son. They conquered some places, but they didn't get consolidated in, into the empire because they just weren't really very good at empire building. And that leaves us off with our history. This will be the last turn that we take in this game. I'm just going to scout a little bit more. And wow. Yeah. Okie doke. Actually, I remember this spot. I played like a year ago on this map, and this place here was a death trap for me. Nice, nice memories, good memories. All right, so thank you much for watching. I know this episode almost assuredly went long. I think it's probably about 45 minutes right now. That's just a guesstimate. Uh, please click like, then click subscribe, and y'all have a great day.